cells use small metabolites as signals of their biochemical status to regulate gene expression by controlling translation itself. The first example is one that's been known for quite some time involving the coordinated synthesis of hemin or heme and globin, the two components of hemoglobin required for oxygen binding. As a reminder, recall that vertebrate hemoglobin has a quaternary structure consisting of two alpha and two beta polypeptides. Each of the polypeptides, when folded, binds a heme group. In humans, globins and heme, or hemin, are synthesized in reticulocytes produced by bone marrow. When the reticulocytes mature, you remember that they lose their nuclei and become erythrocytes, or red blood cells. The erythrocytes no longer make either heme or globin. Heme and globin synthesis then in reticulocytes are coordinated, so the cell does not waste energy making too many of either one or the other globin chains or making too much heme. Here's the regulatory mechanism in some detail. Translation initiation factors in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes enable the assembly of the initiation complex, which consists of a messenger RNA molecule, the small ribosomal subunit, and several initiation factors. In eukaryotes, this process involves initiation factor 2, or EIF2, which is similar in function to the bacterial IF2. First, EIF2 binds GTP and an initiator methionine tRNA. Then EIF2 and several other eukaryotic initiation factors, or EIFs, deliver the initiator methionine tRNA to the messenger RNA during the assembly of the initiation complex. In the next step, the large ribosomal subunit binds to the initiation complex, after which the GTP is hydrolyzed, still bound to EIF2, and all of the initiation factors come off. If translation is to continue, the GDP on EIF2 must be replaced with another GTP. This is facilitated by other initiation factors not shown here. If there is no need for further translation of globin polypeptides, an enzyme called HCR kinase catalyzes the phosphorylation of EIF2 shown here. On the other hand, if hemin levels are high in the cell, which would signal a need to make more hemoglobin, excess hemin, as shown here, can bind to HCR kinase at an allosteric site. The resulting conformational change then blocks the kinase activity so that, in fact, GTP can replace GDP on EIF2, and globin mRNA translation can continue.